Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. And today, uh, if you've listened to my podcast, link up there somewhere, you'll have probably noticed what's coming. But I've changed my family car. I've had a bit of a change, a bit of an update. I've actually had it for a little little bit of time now, but not showed it on the channel. So I thought today would be that day. And if we have a little look over here, you can see I've got an E-Class Estate. And I've gone for the stupid one, the E63. Let's have a little look around the car and then we'll go for a bit of a drive, hear some of that noise and I'll explain why this and why I got rid of my M340i Touring. Right, here we have an AMG key. Actually, I have to say, the Mercedes keys feel a bit, this key feels a bit plasticky. Well, I want to say plasticky, it just doesn't feel that solid. It kind of moves a bit when you press it. So, not massively impressed with that, but... At the end of the day, it's a car key. So, for the eagle-eyed viewers out there, this is an E63S, and you've noticed from the front, I'm sure there's other details, I don't know 100% all the other ones, but the big grille is the most obvious, that this is a facelifted. So this is a 21 car. Now, the reason I wanted the 21 plate and the facelift is the ride quality and the ride quality is noticeably better on the facelift than pre-facelift and i would say before facelift it was like okay but pretty solid and then it went to better and it's not a detractor so it wouldn't stop me buying the car after the facelift and the interior let's have a little look in the new interior we've got all this, this carbon it's that in the 63 I, I think you can get that in the other ones these seats, they're pretty comfy. Burmester sound system is, is decent. The adjustable seats, I've got heating, I don't have cooling, wouldn't mind a bit of cooling. This massive display, although it is two screens. And yeah, quite a simple interior. Now, there's a funny one here. When you look, there's a, a charging port for your phone. Except when you put it in, there's a little NFC reader and it often triggers that. And actually, the amount of time I've managed to get my phone to charge on there is minimal. So most of the time, with this CarPlay, you have to have it plugged in. So I have it plugged in, and then I chuck my phone in there. I like the center console in these, um, because you can have your side down, and someone else, a passenger, can get in, or you can have cables coming out, or all that sort of stuff, without having to have the whole thing up. I like that. It's quite a nice feature. Back of the car, lots of space. You can see I've got a mirror for my child seat in here somewhere, normally. But yeah, loads of space. And the selling point of this E-Class, I would say, is this massive boot. Now, in comparison to a, an RS6, this is significantly wider. You can get like a full-size pallet in there. Not that I ever carry a pallet in there, but in terms of width-wise. And I think... A RS6 has 560 litres, and this has 640 litres of space. Now, if you compare it to an SUV, for example, they measure the, the size of the boot in a slightly different way. But the thing about this one is it's really, really long. This distance is huge in comparison to other cars, and that actually makes it super useful. You don't have to stack stuff loads. You can pile everything in. And that's basically the main reason, or one of the main reasons why I got the E-Class, is you can just get a lot more stuff. And I wanted a lot more stuff in without going for a van or something like that. The car was pretty clean when I initially was going to film this video. And then it's been about a week. It's been sitting on the street and it's got a bit dirty. But... Uh, the wheels, as I've talked about <laughs> in my recent 911 video, I'm not a massive fan of black wheels. I the same sort of conversation really. We're going to change these to a different colour, but I don't, don't really know what yet. Some sort of silvery platinum or something. Now sitting in the driver's seat, we've got with the facelift, we've got this new steering wheel with the touch-sensitive buttons, and a lot of people have complained about them. I didn't like them. I'm not a massive fan, they are a little bit of a pain. The more you get used to them, the easier they get, and you learn that, for example, if you want to go up, you put your finger in the middle and then flick up, and that will take you up, rather than 
just swiping, swiping, swiping. You go sort of in, up, in, up, in, up. A bit like you're pressing a button. The button would be quite nice. I guess with this, we've got a lot more functionality in one place. But other than that, we've got some buttons to change and I have this one set to go to individual and I have my individual mode set up a bit differently. But let's fire it up and we'll go for a drive. Why E63 then? We're in the car. I'm going to go and try and find some nice, nicer roads. And I'll, let's run through why this car and some of the specifics before we start. E63, E63S and why a facelift. The main thing for me was ride quality. I realised that there was a massive offset on this. And actually one of the things, so over sort of expansion joints and stuff, the previous car was pretty bad. Um, and this car is, is better, the ride quality is better, and I think it depends what you come from and what you sort of expect, but now having had this car for a bit of time and living with it, it's, it's, it's good, it's decent enough, it's not the best ride quality, but it's, it's completely fine, and that's what I found about the facelift versus the previous one. The previous one, I couldn't really deal with it. It would be better if I had slightly smaller wheels, a bit more tyre, but other than that, it's, it's quite a big difference. What I realized is the price of this car versus the, a pre-facelift, because the, the ch car hasn't changed massively. I, I, I like the more aggressive front. Uh, these touch buttons, I'm sort of a little bit in or there on. Uh, this car has adaptive crews, spec-wise. They generally come with a lot of stuff. We've got the panoramic roof, uh, but I, and I really like versus on my uh, Lusso, for example, that, you know, this shuts, and, and it only shuts on a lot of cars, it's not a normal, particularly special thing. In the E-Class, we've got some sort of fun techie features, um, the small sorts of things, like the, if the headrests in the back are up, you can press a button and it lowers them all down so you don't have the mismatched heights. Uh, the seats, seats, when you put them down, are on an electric release, that's kind of nice, you don't have to especially considering how deep the boot is, you don't have to reach really far in to push them back. Uh, what else? We've got, it's got this sort of like defense system that goes around the car, like a, it draws a line around the car and has all the sensors. And if you're reversing and it thinks you're going to smash into something, then it will stop the car. Now, it works two ways because yes, it's great, but the gate that I reverse through is really narrow so it thinks I'm gonna smash into it and it literally it feels like you've hit a brick wall it just slams on the brakes like like that and you go Whoa! And then you you know you break yourself because you think you've just caused thousands of pounds worth of damage and actually the cars stopped you so you can one touch button down here you can turn that off if you want but I would say it's probably saved more people then annoyed people in terms of driving into things and hitting solid objects. Just if you're not paying attention or something, it will stop you just smashing your paintwork. Let's put the, the exhaust on. I've not seen the fixed bucket seats in a car when I was looking around. They've all got these ones. They're pretty comfy. They've got quite a good side bolster. Uh, they don't. They don't have the option to sort of hug you. The um, the BMW seats had that, that was quite nice. But we got, everything's pretty adjustable. You can move stuff, the headrest goes forward and backwards. The touchscreen here, CarPlay, got that stuff. There's so much sort of, I suppose, real estate here, of not much going on, but we still have a nice mix of some buttons. Everyone bangs my own about buttons, but we've got a nice mix of certain things you can be touched, you can touch straight away. Uh, there's a few things that I've had to adjust. So you've got a favorites button here. So I press the favorite button and I can then go to my seat and the seat has this seat kinetics function. So it will basically move your seat a little bit over time and it makes it a slightly more pleasant experience doing a longer drive. It's, it, just, it just moves your seat a little bit and I guess promotes a bit of blood flow and stops you feeling like you're sitting in one place. Um, I have that on the quick thing. Then there's a car button down here. If you press the car button, it accesses a lot of the sensors and stuff. So you can turn off the parking sensors, 
once the camera comes up, you actually that that, that one is there. But you can turn on lane holding uh, with a lot of stuff to do with the adaptive cruise. It also with the air suspension and uh, it has a front lift and the rear air suspension will raise. It takes a while for the rear to raise, but the whole car will raise up a reasonable amount when you press that button. And that's quite useful. I've, I've used it when we've been, I don't know, in a field or on some sort of bumpy track or whatever. Just press the car button, press the lift. It would be nicer if that was on one button, but you don't really need it that often. So it's sort of okay. I just wouldn't choose to do it exactly like that. Personally, I would have it as a button. This screen here is you can configure so much stuff and move it around, but I've pretty much set it as is. I've not been using the in-car sat-nav. I've been using uh, Waze and Google Maps and things like that. But if you do use the in-car sat-nav, it has up on the camera, the cam a forward-facing camera comes up here and then it has the maps and things. And it does this sort of 3D augmented overlay of directions on the round on so let's say on a roundabout or a turning it will call out the names and it shows you on the camera the road with a big arrow and the name of the road and like where you're turning it's pretty neat the resolution is not amazing so it's like quite good and the clarity of everything is not perfect but i guess your cameras probably get a bit grubby and dirty and whatever and senses things but it's quite neat is it quite a good system I would say. I do like the little dials on steering wheels just your ability to flick back forward and through <laughs> that, that is the thing it's stupid this car but it does put a smile on your face. <laughs> on smaller roads though, you are very aware that you're driving a large vehicle. So on this dial down here, uh, you can change the suspension settings and the exhaust settings. So I can tap through and I put the suspension in comfort and then the exhaust in loud and then kind of make a bit of progress. I do definitely breathe in going past other cars. <laughs> One thing about the suspension, it is the, my main gripes with this car were sort of low speed town comfort have been, and in, in the previous generation, this, this, this facelift is much better, but both of them, I think actually, when you start moving faster and you go up to sort of, I don't know, 50 miles an hour, and you're sort of moving at, down some country lanes or, or, or smaller roads, or even on the motorway, the damping is pretty good. So you're not getting bumped around loads. It's not a sort of luxury ride, which I think some people sort of think that maybe maybe it should be. And I kind of feel like maybe there should definitely in comfort should be. There's a bit more feel and you feel a bit more things and whatnot. So hey, I guess it adds to the involvement. Now, de-restricted. <laughs> oh, it is a beast of beast. This is a beast. It just has so much torque. That turbocharged motor. Oh, okay, we'll come back and stop there a bit later. Okay, we're in, I'm in comfort suspension at the moment. And actually, I think let's go for sporty suspension. Driving a bit quicker, you don't want the waftiness. You are, you are aware you're piloting an absolute missile down here. And you just... That is the expression you get when you give it the full beans. Your brain just goes, hmm, okay, quite quick. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's quite fun. Our big engined, massive estate cars and SUVs and whatnot, kind of pointless. I don't know whether they're pointless or not, but definitely, <laughs> they can, even though they're big, they can put a bit of a smile on your face. And I think it's the, with this car, it's the difference between, and I'm not sure I'd get it with the 53, it's the difference between the expected performance of the car and what you get under your right foot. So maybe you get used to it over time, but at the moment, it's just, So, okay, look at the noise. Exhaust note. Uh, the, actually, I think for me, you could make this car pretty raucous pretty quickly. Uh, insert Google of any of this engine in a modern car, in a modern Mercedes with a stupid exhaust. Uh, they go bah, 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 make all of the loud raucous noises. I think for me and my usage of the car, it's loud enough it would be more of an experience if it was louder, but actually, this bit. Now, how does it get on it? It definitely doesn't, it definitely sort of like nibbles at the surface a little bit. <laughs> you, you don't feel like you're 100% attached. It's like, it's quite light on the surface and the car just sort of is, is dicing on the edge a little bit. You don't, you feel very secure and whatnot, but it then gives you a bit of feedback. And I think that's the difference between the, maybe the RS6. This car feels, I don't know, it doesn't feel sketchy, but like maybe a little bit more sketchy and consequently a little bit more interesting when you drive quickly. Um, I'm gonna pull in here, get out and give you some thoughts. I tell you what, driving that car quickly is a lot of fun. It's, it's stupid, it's heavy, it's massive all of those things. But the powertrain's great. I think if you wanted it to be completely raw because you put a silly exhaust on it and it would be really quite hilarious. The way it goes down a road, it kind of, it's not completely stuck and in, in. It's quite good, but it, it almost nibbles a bit. It feels kind of up on its toes. Whereas I feel like the RS6 is a bit more sort of, a little bit lazier. But it's, um, you can put it in the drift mode if you want, go a bit mental. I don't really know why you would do that, but I would, I'll definitely try that somewhere. I think I've done it in a field once, but just to, it just, it just puts a lot of smiles on your face. I think you can see that. Um, I'm gonna get back in the car and do a little bit more of a drive. So, oh, we've been driving a bit. I've done a 1,500 miles in this car now. And actually, I like how you can just change the stuff. Let's try Sports Plus. Now that, that feels a bit, it feels probably feels a bit too firm, I think. I think maybe for a, a racetrack or something. Why you would drive this on a racetrack, I have no idea. That would be the stupidest thing ever. I'd slightly like to do it for maybe two laps, not completely cook all of the brakes, all of the car, all of everything. And then probably I'd love to try it in the drift mode and you know, just give it a go, why not? This, you know, this, this is what it's all about really with these sorts of stupid things, but it's not gonna happen much. I think quoting lap times in a car like this, he's stupid, lap times. Like, oh, it goes around the Nürburgring in X, Y, Z. Yeah, you know, so what? Really, who cares? For me, this sort of car, it needs to be comfy. It needs to have lots of space. It needs to have something about it that's kind of cool. I think this does. And it, I would say this is not necessarily the typical option. Everyone gets RS6s. You see RS6s everywhere. I've not seen too many E63s. Uh, I see a lot of E-Class estates actually. I think a lot of sensible people have worked out that that's the, the sort of good all-rounder estate in terms of boot space without going for a, you know, something huge. I would love to do a comparison with this car and a, let's say a new Range Rover and just do a boot space comparison because everyone goes, oh, you've got to get an SUV, get a, a Range Rover. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like the, not the previous generation Range Rover doesn't have a massive boot. It's got a large boot, but not, I don't know. I'd be interested to see in how the practicality. I'm here burbling along with my exhaust. Interior. Um, it's a little bit plasticky, to be honest. It's got, I quite like this, this layout. And it took me a bit of time, I'll admit, I was not really a massive Mercedes fan. 
before. I kind of thought they were a bit old manny. This was a very much a sort of head plus a little bit of a heart decision of, I wanted to get a, a big estate and then probably one of the quicker ones or just the, better, the one that appealed to me the most. But the more I looked into it, the more this seemed like absolutely needed to be the one. And having now used it, it's definitely the one for me. I'd love them to do an S-Class estate. That, that to me would be really interesting because I thought the S-Class when I drove it was awesome. Like just, I want to be, when I'm on the motorway, and I think this, this could definitely be better at that, I want to be like, you know, in a super refined, luxurious, set up and the the s class i drove the, which was the was maybe like a 350 or a 500 i can't remember uh, had large wheels yet the ride quality was very 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 good um so they can do that and it's a bit more isolated maybe you know the 53 actually had a bit slight smaller wheels or you know okay 200d but it, 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 you don't get the smile. <laughs> you don't get the, this car goes a lot faster than it should kind of feeling out of it. And that, for me, everyone has their own performance level. And, and then also budget, because this is just an incredibly stupid decision buying this car. But everyone has their own performance level and stuff, whatnot that they feel is representative. So onwards, let's just, stop here for a second back out the car again and let's cover a couple of the sort of i guess more boring elements boot space massive fuel economy on a long run i get 26 27 mpg that's you know 70 75 something like that and uh when you're driving fast that drops significantly uh, sort of what's expected you would get a lot better with lesser engines but you wouldn't get the stupid performance and the stupid noise, so it all it all rolls in. But driving fast, it's amazingly fun. Here you can see how big it is. It is such a whopper of a car. And actually, when you're reversing, do you have to slightly pay attention because this is quite a reasonable distance from the rear wheels, axles to the back of the car, so it sort of swings in a lot more. Not a problem if you've driven anything long but if you've not before that's actually something i had to think about well i've had a bit of a rip around in the car given my chance to hopefully give you some of my thoughts i think it is the best car in its space i think it's not perfect it could feel probably a little bit more solid it doesn't necessarily feel a bit more solid and the ride quality could be a little bit better and the road noise on a motorway could definitely be a bit better there's probably things, tyres and whatnot, smaller wheels that might help, but it could be isolated a little bit more. Those would be the things I would change. But other than that, I still think it's brilliant. I think with all the compromises, it's still good. I like the fact that it's got some touch display, a lot of tech, uh, but not all of the screens, not everything controlled by touch. And it's just, it's just a pretty fun car. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one.